This book picks up a question that has been around for several millennia, but it does it in the context where there's so much new and exciting science at the interface of neuroscience and psychology, which sheds light on human nature, which we didn't have before. And if we're going to understand how this relates to our wider life, including our religious life, then this book attempts to show how you can be honest about both your science and your religion and make sense of it all. If you're trying to answer any question, there's evidence that comes from all sorts of different places. Some of it's scientific, some of it is not scientific. But if you try to answer a question which seems to go over the borders of both of these, you've got to be honest about doing full justice to the scientific evidence and any other evidence that is relevant. So you've got to be open-minded, but not empty-minded. Science and religion are really answering two different questions. The scientific approach is answering the question, for example, about human nature, what am I? But the religious question is asking the question, who am I? In the, in the wider world of things. And the important thing is to recognise that these are different questions and we mustn't mix up the answers that we get from one with the answers to another, otherwise we have a remedy for confusion and muddle. Perhaps the major ethical and philosophical issue in my field today is not a new one. It's been around two and a half thousand years. Philosophers have been struggling for two and a half thousand years to know how you relate mind and brain. But it's the enormous advances in neuroscience and psychology over the last 50 years that have led to these advances. And the upshot of it all is that every new advance tightens the links between mind and brain. The general public's interest in science is usually driven by personal considerations of what's in it for me. And in the area of developments in neuroscience and psychology, this, because of the media reports, seems to have great long-term spin-offs. It's going to relieve the distress of my aged aunt with Alzheimer's, or my relative with depression, or my friend with schizophrenia. This is where the great advances are going to come. The ethical issues are, for these people, very much secondary issues at this stage. I think it becomes increasingly difficult with the rapid advances in science to people to, who are not scientists to really keep up what is happening at the cutting edge in science. Even for us as scientists, outside of our own field, we struggle at times to understand what it all means. For example, recently, the, dis the confirmation of the Higgs boson, we're still struggling to understand exactly what that means. So in any field, there's going to be difficulties. But where there are going to be difficulties, it leaves open the possibility of misunderstanding. And therefore, we need much greater literacy worked on for the general public if we're not to get these misunderstandings. A good example in my field is that we're constantly being bombarded with beautiful glossy pictures of the brain where different parts of the brain light up when people are doing different things in experiments. And because we now begin to seem to understand which parts of the brain are being involved in these things, we think that knowing that has explained it and explained it all away. And so we feel that our most treasured uh, experiences are being threatened by these scientists. We shouldn't be like that. We should rather see it as a new insight into the mystery that we are.